Time once again for Dialogue Conspiracy with Mae Russell. For the past 14 years, Mae has been researching the facts behind political assassinations and abuses of power in this country. Her program relates the news of the week to political conspiracies. Dialogue Conspiracy originates with KLRB-FM in Carmel, California. And now, Mae Russell. Good afternoon. This is Mae Bressel. It's August the 1st, 1977, and this is Dialogue Conspiracy number 280. The show that I'm going to do today, the broadcast, will be part of a two-part program this week and next week, back-to-back, -back, 45 minutes each, and then I'll send a copy of this tape cassette to members of the House Select Committee investigating the assassination of John Kennedy to be put into the record for further investigation of the Kennedy assassination, which they're supposed to be investigating at this time. <clears throat> Before I begin the show uh, and into the evidence of Lee Harvey Oswald in Mexico City, I just want to say I have a guest here with me today. Her name is Ina Sullivan. She's down from Sacramento. She listens to the show on Sunday night on KZAP, and it's her birthday. Do you want to say happy birthday, Ines? Hello. Very nice to be here. Happy birthday to you. Thank it's, you. This is one of the uh, younger persons, I call her young, uh, because she's much younger than me. <laughs> and uh, she's been following the show for years and becoming informed on these subjects. And so it's great to have her down here to spend the day, and she'll be here in the studio with me while we talk about this information. I'm going to talk today about a man in Sacramento by the name of Mr. N. K. Fields, F-I-E-L-D-S. And I'm going to make an appeal on Dialogue Conspiracy for what is actually a contradiction most of the time, and that is defined as an honest lawyer. Mr. Fields and the political researchers desperately need a lawyer to help with this case and with the information that he has on the Kennedy assassination. I made this appeal once before when I was speaking at San Jose in 1974. I wanted an attorney, or mentioned that prisoner in Soledad by name Robert Hyde needed an attorney to escape psychosurgery at Vacaville that the CIA was doing under the now revealed MK Ultra, and I knew they were doing this in 1974. And an attorney stepped forward and called me after I'd spoken at San Jose Auditorium, Civic Auditorium, and got in touch with me, and then did become the attorney for Robert Hyde, and was able to save his life, help save his life. We stopped the psychosurgery, and there were other contracts to kill him that I've talked before on Dialogue Conspiracy about. And uh, we worked very well, and I'm very grateful for this man who volunteered his time. Uh, Robert Hyde didn't have any money at the time, but this attorney did come forward and visited him at Folsom Prison, Solidaire Prison, and I believe up at Vacaville, and was useful in helping this particular case. Once before uh, on New York Radio, WBAI, I was talking about a woman who believed that she had electrodes implanted in her head, and a psychologist called me and was willing to help her with that case and to give tests to see if there were implants into her head that she was being controlled electronically. I don't ask very often for assistance of this kind, although I could use it for many, many people. But if there is an attorney listening from the Mid-Valley in the area of Fresno or Modesto, or uh, Stockton, or San Francisco, or uh, Sacramento, that area north of San Jose, who can go to Sacramento often and is willing to donate his time, or preferably living in Sacramento, you can contact me at KLRB, Box 3904, Carmel, California, or call me at my home. I'm the only Brussels in the telephone book, and get my address here in Carmel and write to me at the house. <clears throat> I do need an attorney to reach Mr. M. N. K. Fields, and through me, I will have them get in touch with him. Now, Mr. Fields provided me with information, which I am going to read to you on the air today about the John Kennedy assassination. And I will interrupt it a few times to interject some of my research, which supports his allegations. And I will uh, try to spend most of the first part of the program reading his allegations uh, or statements about Lee Harvey Oswald in Mexico. I do want to then go on and give you some background about Mr. Fields himself. He's handicapped. He's in a wheelchair. He's been deprived of the money that he should have in the welfare uh, department. He's had people move him off the property where he lived. They, the landowner uh, was told that the building would be bulldozed if they didn't get rid of him. His documents and photographs have been stolen from him. He's been put in prison and literally tortured 
and treated very unfairly and cruelly uh, several times and gagged in court when he didn't have a defense attorney. I have many, many pages here on the harassment of Mr. Fields, and this is why it's so important to uh, get to him, because the burglarizing of his files, of his offices, of his physical safety, he is in danger, just like Robert Hyde was. It isn't a matter that will take its due course, and that's why we need an attorney, attorney that would work with him, could possibly uh, go with him to Mexico or help him with the committee in Washington, D.C., to solve some of the problems of the Kennedy, John Kennedy assassination and also the Robert Kennedy assassination. Mr. Fields was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize in letters. Uh, I have a document here, a verse. He was up for a nomination at one time uh, and uh, had written a book, and the date isn't on the Columbia University nomination. He was nominated for a book titled Memories, written by N.K. Fields. This was one of his uh, uh, achievements at one time. He also worked in a private laboratory. He had a small research laboratory and it was listed in the National Science Foundation directory. It has a number of the directory on there. It's listed as Fields Laboratory of Applied Science, 125 Flower Street, Costa Mesa in California. Senior officer was N.K. Fields, the president, and then there were consultants and scientific personnel and technicians and research activities into agricultural sciences, geology, geophysics, earth sciences, physics, instrumentation, and ore processing. So the man is an author, and he also ran a scientific laboratory. Where he got in hot water was trying to expose a case where an elderly uh, friend came to him and was worried about her own safety because a friend of hers had been murdered, and these lawyers in the southwest in Orange County were in collusion uh, with taking her property and stealing from a crippled lady, an elderly crippled lady. And the city attorney there panicked and also was responsible for the death of the, his co-worker, one of the lawyers in the case. The city attorney then went on to be appointed um, a judge step in Orange County where he's a judge. And it was in exposing the murders or the kidnapping of old ladies that Mr. Fields got in trouble. His science uh, files were taken, his cabinets were cleaned out, they stole his lab equipment, they drove him out of business, caused physical injuries, unlawfully imprisoned him, then tortured him because he was exposing uh, this cancer of law enforcement and collusion down in um, Orange County. So he was in trouble with these various authorities for his honest expose of what was happening to little old ladies or cripples, and then he himself became crippled and <clears throat> has been kicked around and has been forced to live out of an automobile, and they've broken into his automobile many times and taken his documents. Well, so much about Mr. Fields' background. Um, I'm going to read you statements, as I said, that he gave me on the John Kennedy assassination. You can listen and take them in, and then I'll go into some supportive evidence to back up what he was saying. Now, I uh, took his documents, and I'm sure he hasn't seen my research and had never heard Dialogue Conspiracy, but a listener in Sacramento who knew about my programs had met Mr. Fields, and that's how the three of us got together. These are the summary and conclusions that he gave me on the assassination of John Kennedy and then Robert Kennedy. In numerical order, one, the murder of John Kennedy was planned in Mexico City. I'll comment on that in a little while. Two, it was planned by the CIA. Three, he stated that the Kennedy assassination was caused because John Kennedy disrupted a CIA coup in Albania and inverted war with China. Now, that sounds a little far-fetched, and I was not enough up on the history of Albania and what John Kennedy was doing in Albania in 1961 that could possibly cause his assassination. So I read several books on the subject, The History of the Cold War by Andre Fontaine, a chapter, Korean War to the Present, and The History of the Cold War, 1917 to 1950, and then read two other books on the history of Albania in 1961, uh, World War I up to 61 to see what John Kennedy was doing, what Jackie Onassis was doing in Greece as an emissary, as he alleged. And while the Albanian story is not the part I'll go into now, I have investigated it, and it's one of the reasons that I'm convinced that the other work that Mr. Fields has is as valuable as it can be, because there is a lot of truth of what was going on and concealed from us. If that sounds far-fetched. Remember that the United States government had a CIA war going in Laos for seven years, 
and nobody in Congress knew about it, no member of Congress knew about it, <clears throat> but the CIA was conducting it uh, over there all this time. The world was in a situation of total war, on the brink of total war in 1961, at the time of the landing of the Bay of Pigs, with uh, John Kennedy pulling back, and also over in Albania, and uh, that is a factor which no researcher yet has hit upon, but which I've been working on. <clears throat> Mr. Field said that while he was in Mexico, the information that I'm reading to you now was provided to him by at least three people, not one person or two people, but three or more. He was down in Mexico City, and the information he got on the assassination and these conclusions are based upon many people, three or more, telling him. He was told that three assassination teams of five were recruited. And that, I believe, is true. I know there was a team in Miami, there was one in Chicago, and there was one in Texas. <clears throat> he said they're largely mercenaries in the killing, lately used by the Bay of Pigs fiasco from camps in Guatemala and Cozumel. Yeah. That these unemployed mercenaries were competing for assignments after the Bay of Pigs fiasco. One of their projects was the murder of John Kennedy, and that was only one. He said they were composed of the teams of Aryan types with their team leaders from Washington, D.C. And that's true. In Mexico City, planning the assassination where people like Clay Shaw or E. Howard Hunt was uh, stated to be in Mexico City. He denies it, but there is a two-month uh, period where he was uh, alleged to be a case officer down there at the time, just prior to the assassination. But the Aryan types were running the show with the anti-Castro Cubans. He said there was an in-house credo going around, do something brave to advance in the CIA, and they appealed to the Hitler types who wanted glory and power. I've said a lot, for a long time that the appeal of heroism was the talking point, and I'll go into it a little more later, of selling Jack Ruby to kill Lee Harvey Oswald or bringing uh, the men from Munich, Germany, and military intelligence to Dallas at the time of the Kennedy assassination. Uh, the pitch for heroism has been part of the CIA pitch I read last week on Dialogue Conspiracy, the hypnosis and brainwashing that the agents are told that they're, they're being heroic. He said Kennedy intended to liquidate the CIA and create a responsible and answerable intelligence gathering system. That's true, and in Kennedy's administration, he formed the Defense Intelligence Agency, which then became a bigger monster than the CIA, but he did intend to liquidate the CIA. Uh, Mr. Fields alleges that uh, coups and violence, leaving the coups and violence to the proper military authorities under the control of congressional constituents while retaining the emergency executive power. The Kennedy wanted to leave all the coups and violence only to the military and not get into the, bil the balance of the CIA of overthrowing these various countries. That the, he claims the long-term project of overthrowing democratic governments was in process, and Kennedy feared it, in favor of fascist dictators, <clears throat> and that Kennedy was working on the problem of the overthrowing of these democratic governments, and that is one reason he was a threat to the CIA, and thus the CIA felt it imperative to kill Kennedy in order for them to survive. But that was a small facet of the whole picture of the ultra-conservative control of government. If a president can't be a bought, the only one way to win an election is to kill the Democrat who wins. Mr. Fields went on to say that he typed this out for me or for other researchers. The murder of John Kennedy was financed largely by private capital and interests. Uh, that we can take issue about. I know that the use organization can take a sum of $10 million and use it for counterintelligence, and so can the ITT. So it's just splitting hairs to say it was financed by capital because the CIA puts the capital into private organizations. You see that with Robert Mayhew, who worked for Howard Hughes, who was hired by the CIA to plan assassination teams. And so it goes on to the private guys at the use organization and not the CIA. He said that, went on to say that they used government power and government institutions, but private capital was the funnel of money, which was true. He said it is doubtful if Oswald or his double knew the real reason why Kennedy was being killed. It is doubtful that the team leader knew the real reason. A freelance writer at a newspaper in Mexico called Siempre furnished Mr. Fields with four photographs and displayed many of them and named the events and the names of the agents. And these are agents working with Lee Harvey Oswald in Mexico City 
And this is the material Mr. Fields wants to get to the congressional committees. There's one picture of Oswald, the RV Oswald, talking to a sub-agent of the CIA or a courier who is identified in the reports that were taken in Mexico. There's another picture, number two, of the West team. There were these teams to kill John Kennedy, and these members were talking together. And there's another picture of the West team member, who was the leader of the assassination team, sitting in a garden in conference with others in an estate in the Lomas de Ch Ch I can't pronounce it, Chapultepec colony of Mexico City. There's another picture that Mr. Fields had. All of these were confiscated by the police department in Sacramento, and it's important to understand that the attorney general of this state, Evel Younger, has been accused by the researchers of covering up the assassination of Robert Kennedy, and Robert is involved. His killing was planned and spoken about by these groups also, so you can see why the Sacramento police would confiscate this material uh, from Mr. Fields because it might link these two assassinations together and two people in the highest offices of California uh, government. One picture showed the same person, this team leader with dark glasses on a sidewalk uh, downtown in Mexico getting his shoes shined and the person who took the last two pictures himself was killed. Some of the evidence was lost but some of it is still available. The majority of these photographs con were concentrated on the East team. That must be the Miami killing that was planned for a month earlier because it appeared that the most sophisticated and the most likely to go into action presumably would start in Miami, Florida. Now that is where uh, John Kennedy took a helicopter to a building there because he got information that he was going to be murdered in Miami, Florida just shortly before he was to go to Chicago and then to Dallas. Mr. Fields said, I saw several copies of investigators' reports. One was a photograph uh, rendering by a partly literate clinging woman who took pictures of names and the names of 15 assassins. Some were illegible, but she wrote down the names of these assassins. He said there was serious opinion that there were two people identified as Oswald to disrupt the chain of evidence and investigations, and possibly each team had a member who also had a double, and that also, I know, is possible. In the evidence shown to Mr. Fields, he said, in the evidence shown to me, there were statements of people alleging that they heard various comments by these mercenaries, that they would talk like, kill the project, and in Spanish, it sounded like the project to kill. However, there was a cause, a case of a some brave thing people were bragging about to a girl at the National University of Obregón. In Mexico, uh, they were telling about the brave thing that they were going to do. Well, I guess these anti Castro Cubans who were involved with these killing teams. She told her brother and other students who not only photographed this mercenary but trailed him to a hotel and then to a state in Chapultepec Colony. There were humorous aspects, a Keystone Cop thing. Three sets of investigators were watching these people. I asked Mr. Fields how they happened to be watching the CIA and Lee Harvey Oswald that they got these pictures. And he said, well, after the Bay of Pigs, many of the operatives were boiling mad. They were revamping for something in Mexico. They were violently anti-communist. And Mr. Fields was more uh, working with the socialists or the communists, if I remember the story right. And these people were afraid that there'd be repercussions or backlash coming upon them in Mexico City. And therefore, the, they went about photographing the CIA teams a part of which Lee Harvey Oswald was later recognized because they felt that if something came down, I believe that this is what he told me, uh, the reason they were photographing them was to keep a record of these anti Castro Cubans in case there would be trouble in Mexico. Uh, he said, I spoke to one of the students, and he will furnish his data now for good purpose. Whenever Mr. Fields requests it, if a lawyer comes forward that will go to the committee in Washington, D.C. and write up this information and notarize it or get money from the committee in Washington. They do have the budget. They have $2 million to go with Mr. Fields and the lawyer down to Mexico. This a person that he knows has the data and will provide this information. He said, before the act of 22nd November 1963, why didn't the Mexican people zero in on the assassination teams? And as I said before, he says, they distrusted the United States government and its Gestapo. The U.S. authorities had killed Mexican citizens with impunity and imprisoned and tortured others. And it was explained to me that the police have a rifle range to practice on. 
and the rifle range is called Mexico. The United States has Mexico. Now that's interesting because I have said before many times on Dialogue Conspiracy that um, an unpublished document has provided the researchers has claimed that the school for assassins that goes all over the world to many, many countries that overthrows countries is in Mexico and that this is the headquarters and the rifle range. Uh, this is interesting because Mr. Fields didn't know me or know my broadcast. But he said in down in Mexico, they say the police have a rifle range to practice on. The United States calls it Mexico. The vast population of Mexico considered President Kennedy as nosotros presidente también. He was our president also. They identified with him. And knowing as they do, and we do not, that any democratic and halfway decent president is likely to be in trouble with the gringo capitalistos, they were much more fearful of Kennedy's welfare than we were in the United States. They were afraid of harm coming to Lopez Mateos. The Americans forced the Mexican government to allow the intended air attack against Cuba. They forced that to be launched from Mexico soil from the island of Cozumel, just off of Yucatan, as well as in Guatemala. They flaunted the Monroe Doctrine, and the relationships between the Central American and the nations were strained because the Mexicans and the CIA were working together and the Mexicans were taking orders from our country. He said the American people were afraid they would be bombed by atomic weapons or shooting war could be fought on Mexican soil if we allowed these people to be there. Maybe Castro would retaliate. The mercenaries also were American citizens, mostly American citizens. They were obnoxious in the diplomats in the world, in African countries and elsewhere. They kept voicing their hate against the commie gooks in Cuba and when they were drunk in bars in Mexico City, these anti-Castro Cubans, and were making threats. He said, with all these Hitler types freshly defeated and spoiling to kill something, they needed watching. Uh, if you're listening to Dialogue Conspiracy and you missed the first part of the show, this is Mae Bressel reading some um, statements made by a man by the name of Mr. Fields who lives in Sacramento. I'll be doing a two-part show on this, and I'll continue with his allegations because he wants assistance of an attorney to go to Mexico and get pictures that would show Lee Harvey Oswald or CIA agents that were involved in the three killer teams to kill President John Kennedy. With all of these Hitler types, he said, freshly defeated and spoiling to kill, they needed watching. Oswald would have gotten small notice if he hadn't blown it in the Cuban consulate. He claims that the reason Oswald was noticed and photographed is that he went there and made himself conspicuous. Oswald had been identified as a United States agent or a hireling of agents, and he had failed his mission to infiltrate Cuba. He was supposed to go there next. He also was expendable to the Western team. They had written him off as somebody they were going to get rid of because of his diminished value to the CIA. Um, I take issue here. I don't think it was his diminished value. I think once he was a patsy and he was arrested and he told the Dallas police, that's not my uh, body with a photograph of Oswald holding the rifle and the pistol, and he, he knew the evidence was falsified, and he said, I'm only a patsy. I didn't shoot anybody. They knew that uh, and arranged his killing, I believe, months and months in advance with the hiring of Jack Ruby, and he was expendable because he would be fingered and he would know that he was a patsy. Mr. Fields said the fifth member of the West team was never identified due to the last-minute replacements just before they left for New Orleans. It is, was it so important for the CIA to kill Kennedy quickly and cleanly that other guns had to be used in a crossfire if the first two failed, and this is why they needed teams of five people. The consensus was that if Kennedy sensed popular support and confidence of the American people, across the country, he would then expose and dismantle the Central Intelligence Agency. There's belief he already started to organize an intelligence corps to utilize this machinery that was limited in power. People in Mexico tried to warn John Kennedy that uh, he would be killed, but they failed, and then they were frightened. Fields, Mr. Fields went on to say, that in 1965 and 1966, while in Mexico, I was informed by five separate sources that there were plans made to kill Robert Kennedy when he ran for president. This was just two and three years after John Kennedy was killed. And generally, the, the next time they would fool the American people, down in Mexico they said the assassin was going to be head programmed, um, which is what happened to Sirhan Sirhan in 1968, that he would never get a trial, 
and that he would not be killed by a Rudy. They called him Rudy instead of Ruby. They said the North Americans are stupid, but they're not that stupid to have a crossfire like before. Plans were also made, according to Mr. Fields, to kill Mrs. John Kennedy and their oldest son, John Jr., by causing accidents. That's interesting because Robert Kennedy's oldest son has had three accidents, one in which a girl was permanently paralyzed, and uh, Carolyn Kennedy just missed being blown up by a telephone call. A bomb went off, and a man near the automobile was killed in London last year, and um, she went back to answer the telephone, and that is all that saved her life. So we know that the Kennedy children are not safe. He claims that Edward Kennedy was never any threat to him. Uh, he was no threat to the CIA. They call him a fool. Eduardo L. A. C. Cabron. He's no threat to the CIA. They did talk about killing Robert Kennedy. I have a photocopy here of a postal order sent by Mr. Fields to Ethel Kennedy at her home, and it's dated. And he warned her it's postmarked and certified. And he warned her in September 1966 that um, there were these plans to kill Robert Kennedy, and they heard about them in Mexico and how it would happen. But they put Mr. Fields in a psych ward and called him a nut. He sent a second letter in October 1966, postmarked from Santa Cruz. And I have a copy of the postage, and again, it never got to Ethel or Robert Kennedy. And yet down in Mexico, they're bragging about this uh, uh, plan to do the next killing as far as a couple years ahead. In 1976, Mr. Fields uh, wrote, I've been arrested, harassed, jailed, tortured, injured, behind bars, disabled, I'm confined to a wheelchair. In 1976, the last of the photographs and evidence of this Kennedy matter were stolen in 19, this is just a year ago by the Sacramento police in a blatant violation of our Fourth Amendment, which denied me the means to exercise my First Amendment. There was a fresh threat on my life the 4th of March, that was three months ago, 1977, by an admitted hireling of the government driving a pickup truck number 591112, the door of which had a painted uh, emblem, government emblem, on the door. I'd like to publish this material before I'm killed and before all collateral evidence is stolen. And he signed this um, information I have uh, dated uh, March 23, 1977 that he would uh, swear that all of these statements are true. He has seen, as I say, photographs of the team members. He, he said that uh, several assassination plans were revealed by hirelings that came from the ex Bay of Pigs men that went to the Philippines and uh, were brought back. And I've heard that there was someone knowledgeable, and I have evidence of the Kennedy assassination, who did come from the Philippines. Uh, actually, he went there after... Uh, the assassination knew about the woman in the polka dot dress in the Ambassador Hotel and about the Kennedy assassination and then word got back to Mexico about these assassination teams again from the Pil Philippines. I don't believe, uh, according to Mr. Field's statement, that the Kennedy assassination was planned in Mexico City, but that's no fault or error of Mr. Field. It's uh, just that he doesn't have access to some of the information that the researchers have, having spent a lot of time locked up in mental hospitals and in his car and in prison and kicked around or persecuted. I happen to believe the assassination of John Kennedy was planned in 1960 at the time that John Kennedy won the nomination in July from, um, for the Democratic presidency. The campaign was in Los Angeles and he was named as a candidate for president of the United States in July of 1960, and in September 14, 1960, Robert Mayhew, working for the Hughes Organization, met at a hotel in New York City at the Plaza Hotel, September 14, 1960, with John Roselli of the Mafia and with, and with a CIA support chief. And Robert Mayhew, John Roselli, the CIA support chief at the Plaza Hotel to set up assassination squads in the United States. The CIA Office of Security Director Sheffield Edwards, who was part of this squad, was murdered last year after testifying before the Senate hearings. William Harvey, the CIA official who supplied the weapons for the assassination teams, was murdered after testifying before the Senate hearings in 76. John Roselli, who notified the federal government that some of their assassination teams went on to plan and carry out the assassination of President John Kennedy November 22, 1963. 1963 was murdered three weeks after his testimony. 
John Rosselli is dead, Sheffield Edwards is dead, William Harvey is dead, and these men met with Robert Mayhew uh, to talk about the assassination as early as a few months after John Kennedy won the nomination. Not to get off the subject, but I don't want to forget to mention it, speaking of death, but the news just came in this afternoon uh, before I came to KLRB that uh, Mr. Powers of the U2 fame died today in Los Angeles in a helicopter. Mr. Powers is an important person, a witness, that would have been called before the committee in Washington on the John Kennedy assassination because I claim that he knew the true story about why Lee Harvey Oswald was in the Soviet Union when Oswald was doing it at the Minsk radio factory and why uh, Powers had said that Oswald held down that plane which brought down the U-2 uh, flight in 1969 and 1959 and ended the summit peace conference, the Dantat, in that year of Nikita Khrushchev and President Eisenhower. I didn't mean to digress. Well, we're still on the Kennedy assassination, and the point being that we can finger the agents, the hotel rooms, the testimony, the murders, and the beat goes on. It was going on after Rosselli uh, was put in a drum and testified. He cut up and was chopped up and murdered. William Harvey was murdered. Sheffield Edwards was murdered. And now uh, we have Gary Powers the pilot of the U-2 who died in Los Angeles, August the 1st, 1977. Um, going back to the allegations of the statements that Mr. Fields gave me, because as I say, this will be a two or three part program. I will next week go into some of the uh, story, what was going on in Albania and the CIA involvement of John Kennedy there and some more of his allegations. I have a chart here that he filled out from memory that I want to read to you. Uh, the sources of his information and uh, who they were talking about, and it will be kind of self-explanatory. It's broken down to about 48 little boxes here, but as much as time will allow, I'll give you the sources of information for some of the statements that he was making and then go into some more of his statements uh, probably next week. At the Cuban consulate in Mexico City, they were staying at the CIA. Uh, they were the ones that said had teams of three teams of five members each, and that they knew that Oswald was expendable. They felt the motive was the crisis in Albania between Russia and China in 1971 and the role that America was taking in trying to break the control the Soviet Union wanted over Albania to cause a war between Russia and China at that time. It was from the Cuban consulate that he learned that the children of uh, John Kennedy or Mrs. Kennedy could be killed and that uh, Robert Kennedy would be assassinated. From the Socialist uh, Party that Mr. Fields worked with in Mexico and knew, uh, they were told that the CIA had several uh, teams, that they had a list of the agents. They knew who the agents were that were working with Lee Harvey Oswald. Again, the motive down there seemed to be the same, and they talked about the fact that Robert Kennedy would be killed. And uh, he's got a comment here that the church was in on it. I don't know if he is thinking of the same church I am, but I can give the names on the air, I've done it before and I'll do it next week, of various church members from the United States that were sending money for this same school of assassins that passed themselves off as missionary and the American churches through the Southwest, California, Oregon, around the United States were funding an operation for assassins and thought they were donating for a missionary down in Mexico. From CM Free newspaper down in Mexico City, he learned about these teams of assassins and also a man named Hunt who was not in oil, and that could be E. Howard Hunt, who was in Mexico or alleged to be in Mexico at the time. Again, the motive seemed to be a coup in Europe, and it's the emperor. They were talking about Robert Kennedy would be killed if he would uh, run for president, and that's at the time where Mr. Fields tried to notify uh, the family that were living in Virginia uh, or in Washington. I think the letter was sent to their home in Virginia. Um, an agent from the Kremlin, who he knew down there, who has the code name here, he's given me a code name, who worked with the communists in Mexico City, knew about the assassination teams, uh, these 15 assassination teams, and had taken photographs. And again, the motives were the same about the Eastern European problem. And it was from these Kremlin agents that they knew that the man who would kill Robert Kennedy a few years later was being programmed, that there'd be no trial and that he is being programmed in the head for the role. At the library there, he has a letter of an agent or uh, where he met with U.S. agents who claimed uh, that Oswald was not the only one in the Kennedy assassination. This was, keep in mind, in, 
1965 that these people had these photographs and were talking to Mr. Fields. They said the CIA and the FBI were afraid of John Kennedy, which is true, and they heard talk about the recent plans getting ready at their rifle range, I guess, down there uh, to kill Robert Kennedy. At a hotel where he was drinking, and he has a letter here to signify which hotel, uh, he heard that Oswald had doubles. Now, this is interesting. He says the real one is alive. That's very important because I have the outline of an entire book on Oswald's doubles, uh, the instances of 40 times where one man was using the name Lee Harvey Oswald when uh, the other Oswald was in another location and could be verified he wasn't there at the time. And the way that the book will come together that I want to write on the Lee Harvey Oswald is that one of them, the one that was in the Soviet Union, I believe, is alive. And those of you that are familiar with the program know that I've said it before. So this uh, comment that he has in his little box that Oswald had a double and the real one is alive fits in with my work. And I'm sure that Mr. Fields had no way of getting access to that because he had never heard my programs when he was making out these charts. But I said and have a document from the Warren Commission staff that one Oswald left the uh, Dallas jail at about 12.35 on a Saturday night for arraignment, or Friday night, after Jack Ruby was in the jail and the press were there, and then was brought back at about 1.30 in the morning, and that's where the switch could be brought in and the double uh, carried through the hall and then killed. I do believe that the Lee Harvey Oswald that was in the Soviet Union is alive, and he has this down here. And again, the story that Robert K uh, Kennedy is in danger, his oldest son is in danger. From students uh, at the university, he says not in the university, but students who had rooms near the university who offered information but were frightened. Uh, one of them photographed um, uh, some of these agents, and one of these students was identified and killed uh, for the picture he took. And the pictures were shot before John Kennedy was killed, but they were a picture of Lee Harvey Oswald and the CIA team. And again, he goes into the stories of the programmed head training of the Robert Kennedy assassination. The people at Siemfrey um, uh, gave him information about these assassination teams and the photographs and the plans to kill Robert Kennedy. He had sources from Toluca L, that's a code name for him, where he met people who blamed the CIA and said for many dollars uh, they went to Europe and uh, not only just in Cuba, and they trained at an estate. And he has the name of the state. The only thing I'm not sure of, and maybe there's many training fields. I've heard that at Fort Meade, Maryland, or South Carolina, rather, that the CIA had assassination teams trained. The one that I heard was in Oaxaca, Mexico, but there could have been several estates. He said that at this estate down there, they were experimenting on derelicts, Indians, and drunks, uh, not convicts, and using drug control. These are the kind of experiments that Ronald Reagan wanted at the UCLA school to study the causes of violent behavior to take derelicts, Indians, drunks, and off the streets and put electrode implants in their brain. So I believe if the CIA does it here, they could do it in Mexico. And he heard about this estate uh, that probably could be investigated or identified where they were getting these zombies, I guess, ready for their jobs. Um, he, one gentleman, he has the source here, was evasive, tried to warn John Kennedy in 1963, tried to warn him that U.S. agents had broken into the communist headquarters and had killed them, and two were still alive or being tortured in Mexico. But they wanted to warn him about the assassination and the information that they learned about the Kennedy assassination in trying to protect themselves. The consensus was that the CIA or American agents killed Kennedy for political reasons. Oswald was the GOAT. Others did the assassination. If Oswald did it, he would get U.S. protection, which is what Oswald, one Oswald could have done. Then he says he was killed because he knew who the others were. There's a contradiction, but there isn't. And one Otley R.V. Oswald left the back of the Texas School Book Depository that the Warren Commission chose to use, even though Mr. Warnell is dead, that witness. Or one Lee R.V. Oswald left the depository, and Sheriff Craig saw that, and Sheriff Craig is dead. There were two Lee R.V. Oswalds in the Texas School Book Depository, one up on the sixth floor shooting, one at the second floor having a drink, one left the back floor, and one left um, the front door. So there's no contradiction of what Mr. Fields is saying if he says that Lee R.V. Oswald was promised protection or one was killed, because we know one was killed in Dallas, and I believe one was given protection and flown out of the country. Uh, this information is based upon experiences that this gentleman had in Mexico of documents that he tried 
to warn uh, John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy about that they never listened to, and he's willing to take this information to the authorities in Washington, D.C. He said, I was shown photographs of these team members. Uh, the freelance writer I met at the offices of Siempre took me to a place that he used as an office, and he knows the names of the majority of people. There were two lawyers and a doctor. He explained, okay, and they were disgruntled. Uh, the people who took these pictures got information. One photo especially shows a person who was Oswald or his double, and this writer has photos of what he calls the West team before the assassination of those four or five people. It was the general consensus that Oswald and a couple of others on another team were instrumental in exposing the assassination plots. Now, he says that Oswald tried to expose it, and that is true. Lee R.V. Oswald had gone to the Western Union and sent messages in Dallas, Texas. I think he believed that he would be made a patsy. One of the Oswalds was exposing the plot. It said two were overheard talking in a nightclub by a waiter who was a good communist and immediately used his head and got a street photographer to do the girly on the laugh thing to get pictures in this nightclub of these teams. Oswald blew it and shouted and became abusive in the Cuban consulate in a way not typical to a humble, oppressed citizen from the United States. And uh, he acted that way not as a man without a country, but because he wanted to be identified. He, Oswald, became the object of surveillance, and his identity by the federal agencies was established in Washington, where his code name was discovered. Well, our time is out on Dialogue Conspiracy. I'm reading some evidence or documents of a Mr. Fields in Sacramento who needs a lawyer. If one will step forward and help him and speak up, we'd appreciate it, and maybe you can help the committee in Washington to get the truth out. We'll continue next week on Dialogue Conspiracy. Truth, I thought to myself, we're well, driving down in 68, car in front, is it we're not? That's it. It's not behind, it's not a floor, there is a truth, how things happen. It was yesterday, it was in 1894, and if the heart wanted to come through, there'd be another truth in store. This is KLRB Carmel. That's how we do it. Now I rewind the tapes because they're on one side, you know? I rewind it. And I put one in an envelope and send it up to Sacramento.